Hello and welcome to the next GCSE Biology tutorial. This covers information from the topic B3, Infection and Response, and is part two, covering plant diseases and defences. The rest of this topic is, can be found in another tutorial. Starting off with, what are the different plant diseases that you need to know? Well, first of all, plants can become ill or deficient in nitrates and magnesium from the soil. Deficient means they have a lack of that particular nutrient. So for example, lack of nitrates from the soil will mean the plant won't grow as well. It will have a stunted growth. And that's because nitrates contain protein, which helps growth. Lack of magnesium in the soil means the plant suffers from something called chlorosis, which means it makes less chlorophyll. And you'll remember from a previous topic that chlorophyll is needed in a plant to trap sunlight for photosynthesis. When this happens, the plant will have yellow leaves. There are other plant diseases as well that plants can suffer from, and they can get infected by insects like aphids. In general, common signs to look for in a plant are things like stunted growth, spots or different colours on the leaves, decaying parts, abnormal growths and lumps and changes of colour. You can get test kits to test for plant diseases and you can also look things up in gardening manuals and websites to see if plants are suffering from diseases. The two main diseases that you do need to know are TMV which stands for tobacco mosaic virus and rose black spot fungus. TMV causes a mosaic pattern on, on plants such as tomatoes and that stops them photosynthesizing and therefore growing. The rose black spot is a fungus on rose plants. It causes black and purple spots on the leaves and it stops growth and it also prevents photosynthesis. It can be spread by water or wind and one way it's treated is you can use fungicides to actually kill the fungus and strip all the leaves off that are infected to prevent it then spreading to other plants as well. Just like humans, plants do have defences to prevent uh, disease and infection. These can be split into three groups, physical barriers, chemical defences and mechanical defences. The physical barriers are the actual barriers that stop the pathogen getting into the plant. And these include the waxy cuticle, which you remember is on the surface of the leaf. The cell walls themselves are tough and they're made of cellulose. And some plants even have uh, dead layers of cells on the, on the outside of their stems, which forms bark. Chemical defences are chemicals that the plants might produce. For example, witch hazel and mint produce antibacterial chemicals to kill bacteria. Some plants also make poisons and that stops other animals eating them, like deadly nightshade or tobacco. Mechanical defences are something the plant might do to, to stop the bacteria or the pathogens getting in. They may have thorns and hairs, or they might have leaves that curl up when something touches them. And another defence is mimicry. So for example, the passion flower has bright yellow spots on the leaf and they look like butterfly eggs, so it stops butterflies coming along and laying eggs there. And there's other plants that mimic the shape or, or the size of something and that prevents animals eating them. So the key questions, if you just pause the slide now and take five to ten minutes to answer these questions. Okay, so what does lack of magnesium cause? Remember, lack of magnesium means a plant won't make as much chlorophyll and that means it's not going to be able to photosynthesize as well. The leaves will turn yellow and it suffers from something called chlorosis. Mechanical defences. I've asked you for two, so any of these will do. Thorns or hairs, leaves that curl up when they're touched, or mimicry. And you can give an example of how a plant might mimic something. How is rose spot fungus treated? It can be treated with a fungicide that kills the fungus, and then stripping all the leaves off from the stem to prevent the infection spreading. So in summary, we've covered plant diseases and plant defences. That's the end of this topic. Please see the other tutorials for the next topic. Thank you.